Hey guys, my name is Sid and welcome to another vlog. So today is September the 13th and you guys have probably heard the iPhone 10 has been announced. Now, uh, I'm a huge Apple fanboy and I pretty much own everything that Apple makes. You know, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the Apple keynote, all the new products that they announced, a little bit information about the new phone and then at the end I'm going to give my thoughts about this product launch and uh, which direction I think that Apple is looking to move ahead in the future. If you guys want to see more tech videos like this, hit that subscribe button and let's get on with the video. The first thing that Apple announced is the new Apple Watch 3. Now the biggest change in the Apple Watch 3 is two things. First of all, they beefed up the processor, which doesn't really matter to you and me. But what they did do is introduce cellular into the Apple Watch. So now you don't need to tether your phone to your Apple Watch to make it usable anymore. So you'll have full data connectivity as well as the ability to answer and make calls. You can also get text messages and stuff on your Apple Watch. And I think this is probably one of the biggest announcements that happened today. One interesting thing is that they've baked the SIM card into the watch. What that means is you don't actually need a separate SIM card that you put inside the watch. It's already inside the watch and can be programmed to, to basically select the carrier that you want. Now this is really uh, interesting technology and uh, I'm pretty sure the next iPhone or the one after that is probably going to have the same kind of technology inbuilt. So you probably have an electronic SIM inside the phone which any carrier could reprogram and then have their service running on the phone. So the whole uh, SIM card requirement is pretty much going to go away in the future, at least that's what I think. Uh, it does take up a significant amount of space in the phone which could be used for something else. So I see that happening in the future. It's already happening with the Apple Watch. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that's really cool about this feature is it now makes the Apple Watch the ultimate iPod. So you can have your Apple Watch on your wrist and stream your whole music collection over the cloud directly through your Apple Watch and your AirPods. Basically what that means is, is that you don't have to carry your phone to the gym or when you go for a swim or when you're doing any kind of activity outside, you'll still be able to answer all your phone calls, get all your messages and listen to all the music that you want while engaging in these rigorous kind of activities where you probably wouldn't want to carry your phone. So that's an amazing feature. So Apple actually demoed it with showing somebody on a paddle board in the middle of the ocean. That's really cool. Remember the Apple Watch is completely waterproof and you can actually go diving with the Apple Watch. So I thought that news was super interesting. I, I see a lot more applications that are going to be coming out for the Apple Watch. Uh, right now you can get Apple Music on your watch, but I'm sure all the other people are going to catch up. Spotify, Audible, all the podcast companies, the audiobook companies, they're all going to be able to be streamed through your Apple Watch. The Apple Watch Series 3 is going to be something to look out for. So the second thing they announced is the new Apple TV and it's called the 4K Apple TV. Now the main difference between this and the regular Apple TV is that it just outputs in 4K HDR. It's not a big difference. They have included the A10X chip inside the new Apple TV and that should make a big difference in terms of gaming. If you do have a 4K TV, it's gonna make a world of a difference, especially if your screen size is over 60 inches. For me personally, I don't have a 4K TV yet. So it doesn't really make sense for me to buy this product. I have the Apple TV 4 already. I don't really game on my Apple TV anyway, so this is gonna be a non-purchase for me at least for now. If I do pick up a 4K HD TV, you know, this is probably going to be the first thing that I buy to go with it. So next announcement. You might not be aware if you're not really following the Apple news, but Apple actually announced an iPhone 8 and an 8 Plus. Now the major difference between the 7 and the 8 is that the 8s now have a glass back, which is supposed to be made of stronger glass. It's got an upgraded camera, uh, not in terms of megapixel, but in terms of AR. It's got a better front facing camera as well. It's got wireless charging. It's got a new processor. They call it the A11 Bionic. It's, it's got six cores. It's faster, more power efficient. So it's going to be a win if you get the latest iPhone. It's going to beat all the benchmarks for sure. So performance wise, you're going to get a bit more than what you get with the 7 Plus. It's got a new feature, which is a upgrade to the portrait mode, which tracks your face and you can change the amount of lighting that's on your face. Apparently the A11 Bionic chip helps to do that. It's also got 25% louder speakers and now the screen supports True Tone. What True Tone is, is it adjusts the brightness of the screen and the color temperature to accommodate for the lighting of your room. So it does make the screen look a little nicer. I'm really enjoying that feature on my iPad Pro 10.5 inch 
that review is going to be coming very soon. So to sum it up, the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus is basically a marginal improvement over the iPhone 7. If you were to look at how Apple has been naming their phones for the past couple of years, this would probably be called the 7S and the 7S Plus. In terms of form factor and dimensions, they're almost identical to the previous phones. In three colors now, we've got the space gray, we've got a white, and now the new gold. They're still calling it gold, but it looks kind of like a pinkish, burgundy-ish gold. Looks really nice with the new glass pack. Overall, I don't think it's going to be a huge difference over the iPhone 7. So if you have an iPhone 7 Plus like I do, you probably not want to go for this phone. So the prices are pretty much the same as last year's iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So you should already kind of have an idea of how much these phones cost. They do look nice though with the new glass backs. So aesthetically, they do look slightly different. And now finally, let's talk about the big news and that's the iPhone X or 10. It's actually officially the 10, but I like X better. When they first announced that it's called the 8 and the 10, I was wondering what happened, what, how are they gonna name the 9? Because next year you're probably gonna have an 8S and a, a 10S maybe, or maybe not. And then the year after that, it's gonna be the 9 and the 11. And then what are they gonna do after that? Is it, are they just gonna skip the numbers? And I understand they called it the iPhone 10 because it's the 10 year anniversary of the iPhone and it made sense to call it that but this whole 8 naming scheme just seems weird Apple why don't you just switch it to like the iPhone 2018 and the iPhone edition 2018 and call it a day I mean like that's what you do with your other products that's what you do with your MacBooks that's what you do with your iMacs so it just makes sense to do it with the iPhone but anyway forget about the naming let's talk about the phone so the biggest change in the phone is what they call the Super Retina display. Now the iPhone has an edge to edge display. So from the top to the bottom of the phone, the entire thing is a display, which is a pretty amazing accomplishment. Uh, Samsung and some other manufacturers have been creating phones that have very, very tiny bezels or no bezels and very small chins at the top and the bottom. What Apple has decided to do is go for the whole, the whole phone is a screen and they have a little cutout in the middle of the top of the phone that has all the sensors that are required for the phone to function. Speaking of that cutout area, it's now got a new feature called Face ID. So in order to enable that kind of look and feel, they had to remove the Touch ID. And that little cutout area is home to what its replacement is and that's called the Face ID. It basically uses four different sensors on the top of the phone. It's got an infrared camera, flood illumination, dot projector and a front facing camera. So these four sensors together allow the iPhone to recognize your face in extreme detail. So they pretty much build a 3D model of your face on the phone and save it in the same place like uh, where the touch ID was saved. So it's the secure enclave of the processor and all that processing is happening on the phone. So nothing gets sent back to Apple. It's all on the phone in real time and they detect your face and they allow you to unlock the phone. So this facial technology is something that's unique to Apple. So uh, apparently it's gonna work whether it's dark or light, uh, whether you grow a beard or whether you wear a hat or whether you're wearing a scarf or you're wearing glasses, uh, it's still gonna work. And uh, I'm kind of skeptical about the face ID technology. They actually messed up on stage. Unlocking it is as easy as looking at it and swiping up and you know let's try that again ho 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 let's uh go to back up here and get right in so here we are uh one of the phones didn't work i'm pretty sure it's going to be very accurate they claim that it's got a one in a million chance of being a false positive uh, compared to one to fifty thousand that was there on the touch id so it's far more accurate but I'm curious to see how long it takes to, you know, unlock the phone and whether you need to like really lift it up to your face or whether you can have it down here and just look at it and it recognizes. I think it should work well. Apple generally deploys technology when they're very confident about it and uh, it works really smoothly. That's, that's the great thing about Apple. They wait until the technology is perfected and then they deploy it. So another significant change in the iPhone 10 is that you no longer have that home button to return to home. Their solution is introducing gestures. 
So you have a gesture where you swipe from the bottom to the top and that returns you back to home. And then if you swipe halfway and hold it there, you'll get multitasking. So they move the control center to the top right ear of the phone and then the notifications to the right ear. So um, what's interesting about this is that Apple is not the first company to do this. BlackBerry OS has been doing this for ages. If you look at BlackBerry OS, it's actually a completely gesture based operating system. I think Apple has done it better for sure. It looks more smooth. It looks easier, but I'm still skeptical. I want to try it myself before I'm ready to give up that home button. And it's just nice to have a button that you can click and go back home. You know, that's one of the cool things about the iPhone. Every iPhone has had it for the last 10 years, but um, I think you have to move on. I thought they'd use something with pressure to allow you to get home, you know? So a bottom area of the screen, you can press down on that little uh, tab thing that they had and it'll take you back home. Uh, similar to how the Touch ID works now on the iPhone 7, you'd get that pressure click and you'd get back home. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't do that, but uh, you know, I think it's an interesting take on it. They want to move more towards gestures. I'm sure they must have tested every option and this was probably the best one. But let's see, let's see when we get our hands on the phone and let's see how it feels. iPhone 10 also comes with all the features that were there on the iPhone 8. So you've got your wireless charging, you got your upgraded cameras. In fact, the iPhone 10 comes with an even more upgraded camera. So both the cameras, the telephoto and the regular camera on the iPhone 10 have optical image stabilization. So that should give you better shots. It's also very highly optimized for augmented reality. Apple also announced a new feature that they have, which are called Animojis. So how these work is basically the face ID system detects the different contours of your face and changes in your expression and uh, mimics a little animated character on screen with those facial expressions. So it's kind of cool. You get your voice talking through like a little animated character with expression which you can send to somebody else over an iMessage. I kind of liked it, it's fun. I don't know how much I would use it, but yeah, it's a cool application of the Face ID and kind of lets you know what Face ID is capable of. Now, the iPhone 10 comes in only two colors and that is the silver and the black. I think they look really nice. The phone looks beautiful. Apple knows how to make things look beautiful. So let's talk about the pricing of the iPhone 10. I mean, it is pretty expensive. I was just looking at the Dubai Apple website and uh, the base model is 4,000 dirhams. So it's a thousand dollars into four, like how Apple usually converts it for the UAE Middle East market. So that's 4,000 dirhams. If you want the 256 GB version, there are only two models now, the 64 and the 256. It's 4,780 dirhams. It's almost 5,000 dirhams. That is ridiculously expensive. I mean, I'm an Apple fanboy, I believe in the Apple tax, they do give you better products, but that is so, so expensive. Um, it's hard to justify the price, but you know, maybe, maybe once I hold it, I'll be like, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just get the phone. Now, usually I don't like people complaining about the price of a phone. The reason is it's something that you use every single day of your life, you know, more than your car, more than probably your computer because it's always on you and you're always using it. So I think it's justified to spend on a good phone. If you're buying a 5,000 dirham phone, you probably want to go for Apple Care, and Apple Care is going to be another 1,000 dirhams almost at 6,000 dirhams for the phone, which is just why Apple, why? So that's all for the news. Now let me talk about my thoughts. So first of all, Face ID. I think Apple missed out big by not including Face ID in the iPhone 8. I mean, the technology seems pretty amazing. It makes a 3D representation of your face and you can do so many things with that. And we already know that Face ID is gonna be opened up to developers because you have Snapchat already making applications for Face ID or with the facial recognition technology. Imagine being able to read the emotion on your face and adjust the app based on your emotions. Imagine the implications for gaming in AR. There's like so many things that Face ID could be used for, but they have restricted it to only the iPhone 10. Now, I'm sure the iPhone 10 is gonna sell like crazy. If they'd included it on the 8 and the 8 Plus, imagine the amount of adoption it would have. Developers would be a lot more interested in building Face ID based applications 
and that would really drive this technology faster and and get more adoption for it. I just feel like they missed out. They could have easily included the same sensor in the iPhone 8. I know it would have probably cost them a little more, but I think it was worth it. So Apple has adopted the Q wireless standard, which is amazing. So now the whole product lineup is going to be able to charge by that technology. So that means your iPhone 8, your iPhone 10, um, your Apple Watch 3, as well as your AirPods can charge through this technology. Samsung and a bunch of other phone manufacturers have had this technology for a really long time, but Apple going so all out and including it in their whole product lineup is gonna make a huge difference to the adoption of this technology. The iPhone 10 is really a big restructure of the way that the iPhone works. So for the first time ever, they removed the home button. They've gone edge to edge with the display and a bunch of other innovative technologies like face recognition. The future of the iPhone is gonna be based on how well this iPhone 10 performs. I'm sure it's gonna be sold out like crazy. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna buy the phone. But that price point worries me and I'm just curious to see how people react. They've changed so many things this time. Will I get the iPhone 10? I'm very conflicted because of the price. Uh, I might just pick up one for Mamta. Her, she's got an iPhone 6S and it's kind of on its last legs. So we might just pick one up for her because she needs a new phone and uh, so that I can review it for you guys and give you my real life impressions of it. Uh, anyway, that's it for the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the iPhone 10. I'm very curious what, uh, how, what other people think and uh, whether you guys are going to buy one or not. See you in the next one.